Welcome to the last match of the round robin phase at the Captain's Clash. So again, we are on North American server. We got a new tournament here. And we got Team Cure against Team Airboy. So, this is the last best of three series. After this, we're heading into the actual playoff bracket, which means that we are switching over into best of fives. But these two are currently battling for slot number two and slot number three. Now, full disclosure, to my knowledge, Nothing that happens here will affect the actual standing for the, well, not the actual pairing for the playoffs. So it will affect the standing, but the the way that the bracket works is we have in total six teams that are currently participating in this round robin. Number five and number six are starting in the loser's bracket, so they're not uh, starting in the winner bracket. Those two teams have already been determined. Number one is going to face up against number four in uh, the uh, winner's bracket, in the upper bracket. That match has already been decided. So since these two teams are currently fighting for rank number two and rank number three, it doesn't really matter who wins here. So we could see all kinds of crazy stuff. If they all of a sudden bust out Chogal, if they just decide to go with the Butcher, you know why. Because technically this match doesn't matter. It will decide who takes second and who takes third spot. That's definitely true. But because these two teams, second and third spot, face off against each other in the first round in the winner bracket in the playoffs. Anyways, there's not really anything on the line. So they could just come into this and say like, either they're coming in and saying like, okay, we don't care. We're going all out on this. We're just going to treat this like any other game. And we're going to uh, do our best. Or they're saying, there's nothing on the line here. Let's make this a bit of a fan service game. We're still trying. But we're going to bust out a couple of heroes and comps that we might not pull out if there was more on the line. So are we going to get some crazy heroes? They're not going to go all, all YOLO mode here, but I wouldn't be shocked if a team is on the lead, for example, if they all of a sudden busted something out and said, like, you know what, let's just go for it. So things start off fairly normal. You're looking at the bans, and uh, it's essentially what we've had throughout the tournament. There are no special draft rules here either. So, no restrictions regarding the draft. And we're starting things with, well, Dehaka. We got Hanzo. Maev as an opening hero for Yearboy, also taking that away from Q as an option, of course, since we are in Towers of Doom. But with the situation as explained right now, my first question is hey, it's Towers of Doom. Vikings, anybody? This would be one of the games where I would say, you know what? Why don't, bu why don't you bust them out? Somebody could play them. They might also just go for a couple of role swaps. I mean, Banana, okay, here comes Uther and Stukov. I was about to say that Banana is, of course, somebody that has been pushed into the support role a lot by the teams that he's playing for. But if you've ever seen him participate in as a captain in a captain's draft tournament and create his own team, he's the guy that normally wants to play damage dealer and has done so in Europe a lot. So I could have seen some role swap happening as well here. But now that they are going for the strong foreman around two supports, what happens is that Vikings get banned. It's kind of sad because this would have been a cool draft. If you play Vikings, you want to make sure that the foreman that you're running is insanely powerful. And if you have a double support and then you get a good damage pusher in that can take structures down, um, Vala, I don't know, Sylvana screaming, whatever it may be, um, then you have the Vikings, you have a strong force as a foreman that can go through structures and you have the Vikings soaking or controlling the side lanes. So this would have been a fun draft for us, not for Team Cure. So they're just saying like, no, 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 they're banning them out. They get Diablo and Malfurion for the blue team. And now the question, what is the red team going to do? I also have the question, how much of an influence does Dino have on the drafting? Because if somebody would love to yolo out some crazy stuff, it's probably him. So, we'll see. There's Vala, and we get Nerf. Alright, so we get Vala as expected, with the double support and Uther doubling as a main tank was kinda given. Yeah, and Elisa secure. Final pick for the blue team. Map number one in the best of three. And what is Cure's weapon? Uh, normally we'd look at this and we're like, yeah, maybe Tracer. Huh? But with the draft on the other side, it's a little bit less likely. Vala would absolutely love that. And then you have Uther, Mayev. There's a lot of tethering stunning out as well. So Sergeant Hammer it is. Trying to fight fire with fire a little bit and going for an auto attacker. So we go to Towers of Doom. Game number one. Team Yaboy against Team Cure. 
First game in the best of three series and over on the left side we have in blue team cure. With the captain playing Hanzo in this game, Fuzz on Sergeant Hammer, Bloodcool is playing the Harker for the team. We have Valaman, Malfurion and Brandon on Diablo. To the right side of the map, yeah boy, on Leoric for the red team. We got Banana H on Stukov, Vince on Uther, Chaotic is playing Mayev and Dainu is playing Vala and is gonna lock in that auto attack style and there it is. So, time to shine. You got your double support behind on you. You have Mayev to distract and tether them a little bit. So now it's all about the auto attacks. Again, the little disclaimer that Dainu, as all the other Europeans, is playing cross server. These games are being played on the NA server. So he is playing all of this on uh, a higher ping than most of the players here. For an auto attacker like Vala and the style that he's playing, that's definitely going to be something to uh, consider. But obviously, they've done it in the past. We've seen NA players also playing cross server too, but still noteworthy for everybody watching right now. First kill against Uther, so that 5 versus 5 attempt in the middle of the map didn't quite work out as intended for the red team. They got some stacks together for Vala, which was of course half the reason why they love to engage in that, but losing Uther was definitely not planned, so he goes down as topside. Oh, look at that, a 3-2-3 pause right there. Damn! Tactical pause detected by Fuzz on the blue team. They're getting a hit in against Leoric and they're like, you know what guys, let's coordinate this a little bit better and pause the game real quickly. So I'm not quite sure what exactly happened down at the bottom of the map. Doesn't seem like anybody actually disconnected, but yep, topside, they have maybe a chance to go for Leo. Now, I would still expect him to ghost walk away here and go full Wraith, but then again, I don't know if he's on cooldown or not. So, we'll see. They are definitely trying to be aggressive around it. If Bloodcool would have to hit a Tong for that to get really dangerous here. But, could potentially be the case. Six stacks, as I already mentioned, on Vala. It's not really too much that they got there. But, if they can get Diablo, uh, sorry, Leoric here too, then that would of course be quite the opening into the game. But, nah, we'll see. And we're back! And Leoric gets dragged! Indeed, is... Oh, okay, able to get away. <laughs> Not even close. Yeah, so apparently Fuzz just paused the game and then disappeared. Didn't say anything. No, my my personal fa like we all have theories, right? So apparently it just disappeared for like more than a minute and he didn't say a word. And everybody was just like, okay, we don't know what's going on. Now, I expected spilled coffee. I mean, normally when you just like panic pause and you just run away, that is just like spilled coffee and you're just in an oh shit mode. But there have been interesting series too. Alien Abduction is probably one of my favorites. So, huh. If you all of a sudden play significantly better or significantly worse, that might be a thing. Maybe he was abducted, brought to a spaceship, time works different for them, they did all kinds of sexual experiments with him, and then he got uh, genetically enhanced to absolutely dominate at uh, computer games. Ha! <laughs> I mean, it, it could have happened, but we'll probably never find out. Somebody has to get Joe Rogan on the, on the case, I'm sure he's going to be intrigued by this. He's going to let us know all of the details. The man's an alien UFO expert. So, we need to get the big guns in. On level 4, we actually have for Sergeant Hammer the regenerative bio steel. That's a Nick talent right there. I haven't seen that in a hot minute. Vala is still stacking and is right now sitting on uh, 16. So, slowly getting there. Kill for a kill up to this point. But that 4 man is still quite powerful, starting to take structures out. And Hana H also moving away. We have a triple order phase obviously coming in. And if we have some real fights breaking out over that, then Vala is going to just do her thing and work in those order attacks and try to stack that up. Blue team. Let's keep it careful here. Yeah? Dino keeping the hatred up. <laughs> and since the hard guy appeared, he also had to get the hell out of there because that could have been bad. Vala's going for the top right. Leoric is actually attempting to delay the rest of the team slightly. Of the opponent's team. But the shots are fired. They get the two altars, the red team. Nobody really contested at the bottom of the map again. You don't have Sergeant Hammer with her level 7 yet, so it's always a bit dicey if you're trying to engage into a fight. You want to have that mobility. 
Q didn't, so she just let that slide. Not a lot of team fights for Vala, but she's still able to work some auto attacks in. And you know what? Might be able to get a bit more done down here too, slowly and steadily. This is turning into an actual team fight. We have Banana H saying hello, currently still hiding in the shadows, just trying to suggest to the opponent that there's only three heroes around. But now we have the mobility for Sergeant Hammer, so in comes the Hava Siege Mode. This is a talent that at this point I really think Blizzard could just make baseline at level 7 the same way that they, you know, did it with some of the talents for Stitches on 13. Because there is no real other choice. Unless you're trolling, you're not gonna see other talents. I've seen some fun games in the past where people go, you know, for graduating range when they're playing with Stitches and he just repositions Sarge and have him with helping hand. But that was ages ago. And if you're looking at any real game. Whenever you the last time in an actual game that people were trying to win that was a little bit of a wood league or plastic league, people seem taking a different talent. It's Hava Siege mode all day, every day. Probably more than hook range on Stitchers was ever taken. Don't have the numbers for that right in front of me, but I would imagine that nobody is taking anything else outside of you running a quick match down with people that don't read talent abilities. So, yeah, I mean, either way, it's one of those things I would not be too annoyed if they made that baseline at some point. Shuffle the talents around maybe a little bit, look at what level 7 could provide, but yeah, either way, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, right now, we got level 10 slowly coming up, the next altar phase with the double altar uh, is on its way, and Vala is still working this in, so... Again, for Dino, it's not really a spot where you can do a lot of moving into fast and Sergeant Hammer's range is obviously also a bit of a weird one because first of all you get pushed back like in this case, but also these auto attacks from Sergeant Hammer, they hurt and they hurt a lot, so they're currently getting hit hard here. But as things stand, level 10 will be ready in a few moments and teams are fighting over the altars now. The Haka is coming in and is saying hello from the top lane is visiting. Leo is just now starting to move down and here comes the attack. Nice move forward. The double rain of vengeance and Vala is working it. Oof. Dainu dancing around the opponent and weaving in those audio attacks. Wielding his bow like a surgeon or scalpel. Look at that. Oof. So still nobody dead or dying. They're still trying to get the channel in and at least in this case the first altar is claimed by the red team. They have a chance to fight for the one at the bottom of the map too. Going for an easy exchange obviously is the minimum that they're getting. And with Sergeant Hammer slowly pressing forward it seems like they're willing to let one go, give that one up. But they're actually content having grabbed four of the shots and yeah, that's more or less it. So still very easy way, or very smooth way to ease into the game here. Yeah, and uh, with 51 stacks now, Dainu has, of course, the first quest reward too. So a bit more damage for him as well. Leoric, topside again, dealing with the Haka. Couple of camps up. But Sergeant Hammer is now becoming more problematic in the sense that we are seeing Fuzz really control space and makes it difficult for the red team to dive into any of it. And that could also control this. There's the arrow against three. They're still trying to claim it. Trying to sneak it, and they do! The shove takes the camp for them. But then Vala dies, and Uther dies. Was it worth it? Nope. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, he said that already. So, this is how he played out. Check this out. So the arrow comes out, big damage, and they're like, what if we still take that camp? Yeah, there's the shove. They're trying to get out. And bam, that is the end of two of them. And now Cure and his team are starting to push for the bottom bell tower. Alright, so. It seems like it's going to be an easy conversion for them. Not going to be... No, actually, not quite. Diablo! Okay, that was an interesting shot. I think if not for that, they might have been able to take this one on. Malfurion dies. Blue team... On the retreat, I mean, it's a 5 versus 4. It was for a few moments because the Haka is still at the top. Not bothered by anything. But, yeah. We got a game on our hands. So, 3 kills to 2. Vala now on 60 stacks. If they would have dived into that the way that they did, it would have been. In oh, another quick hit. Divine Shield comes out with Vala dying. She obviously also missed one of her. 
uh, may miss 5% of the auto attack speed. So one of the Gambit stacks is now gone. By the way, can I just say that it's dive? The past tense of dive is dive. This whole dove thing is really not my thing. But actually, wait, now I'm confusing myself. Well, what am I saying all the time? Dived into the back line. Yeah, okay, so there we go. But yeah, like, this is always driving me nuts. There's people that say dove. When I get dove, I just want to throw up. I need a bucket at that point. So there's a little flank around. <laughs> and Vala is dead again. So is my... F They're playing a little bit too greedy. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate an aggressive play as much as the next guy. But at this point, you're clearly overdoing it. I mean, these guys are so hungry for kills that they're now losing three in the process. And this is going to be the fourth. So this... Is <laughs> and the Uther Ghost is just dancing. All right, all right. The full five-man team wipe as they're getting murdered. Vala has now died twice. That's 10% of the order attack speed already gone. And yeah, this just hurts. This absolutely hurts. So as it stands right now, things are getting a bit bad. There's a level disadvantage. Sergeant Hammer is already pushing slightly in the middle. And on top of that, you're also dealing with a bell tower that you lost. Yeah, things are kind of wild. <laughs> I mean, seriously, they just sacrificed the entire team. They were like, YOLO! As I said before, this series technically does not matter for them. But I would assume you still want to win it. But it seems like so far the comp is not quite working out as they wanted to. If you have 83 stacks when you already die twice with the double support behind you, yeah, that's not something that you should put on your CV. That's usually not really a big argument in your favor. Now they're down a talent as level 16 is already available, so that's the next problem that they're facing. Sergeant Hammer escorts a couple of pumpkins in at the bottom of the map, so that's more shots fired. Vala is doing damage at the top, Malfurion gets the channel, it's another 5. So now they're down to 24. Initially the red team was doing well, but now they're absolutely tied. Here comes the next fight, and Cure gets cured of all his hit points. Uh, 16 is about to get ready for the red team. Not that they needed it for the last kill, so sometimes, you know, even a talent disadvantage is not really that big of a problem. So, yeah, Cure is gone, and they're kind of back, more or less. You have to retake the bell tower. Nobody tried to go for that. But, yeah, they're stealing another camp away. <laughs> Again in enemy territory. To be fair, Hanzo is still gone. Mm -hmm. So, they <laughs> talking about being aggressive, I mean, they're coming in with the exact same move again. Just like flanking in from the side, trying to do uh, their big aggressive play. Vala now has Manticore. 15% attack speed still remaining. Still. Diana could do a lot with that. Damage output, just to give you an idea. 43,000 for Sergeant Hammer. Dino, on the other hand, is sitting at 24,000. So really not all that much to compare here. Sergeant Hammer is by far ahead. And Uther forced to put the Divine Shield up for himself. So, did not want to go down. Now, it's a triple altar phase. This is probably where we're going to see some proper fights. I mean, it's usually an exchange between top left, top right, and then the fight for third. So don't really see any reason why it would be very different this time around. But with Leo pushing, not quite getting that topside bell tower. That would have been ideal. It's still a 5 versus 3 situation in favor of Kyo's team. So if they get 2 out of the 3, that would be big. That would give them a huge leg up for the remainder of the game. So they're protecting Valama as best as they can, but the interrupt is ready. Sergeant Hammer. Oh, get actually gets actually hit! That's actually connect. Nice! Ah, but Sergeant Hammer... Tranquility wasn't even needed here. Yeah. Hindsight being 2020, well, now they need it. <laughs> Sergeant Hammer gets murdered, but there's like one. And no! Vala gets Hanzoed! Vala got Hanzoed, only three shots fired against five, and now the battle for the final altar, which could. Ah, oh, the barbecue! Banana Edge! A toasty Stuko here. Yeah, Diablo. 
Hanzo is back, Hanzo is back, and Diablo is gone. The Haga says hello. Dibbles was, of course, fully stacked and is going to come back. Another disc is out. Leoric is gone as well as Cure just absolutely murders one hero after another. He is the reason why Vala died earlier, and now he's just trying to get the rest of the team too. Diablo is back to business, and they are working on the next camp as Malfurion is channeling. So it's going to be 14 points on the core of Team Yeah Boy. And yeah, with all those shots fired, they might even be able to escort a couple of the pumpkins in and wreak more havoc here. So, not bad. I mean, as far as uh, nah, as far as far leads go, it's not shabby. A level ahead, three kills ahead, still a five versus three situation. They could take a little bit more control of structures. That would be amazing, but... We'll see. Vala is just about to scratch the second quest reward on her level 1. 97 stacks right now, leaving her with 30,000 damage. Both Hanzo and Sergeant Hammer are essentially doubling that. Vala has as much damage as a, as a hyper carry as Diablo has. Diablo has 30,000. Vala has the same. Tiny difference between the two. Near level 20 next. Could go for boss. Red team could also try and take it, sneak it away. Blue team is not going to be willing to fight before they have level 20. But they already see the rotation here. Don't go in for that yet. But they're slowly starting to come in. Ultra capacitors any second for Sergeant Hammer. There it is. And here comes the Hellgate! And a dead Uther. Trying to chain it so that he has no opportunity to get a Divine Shield out. Now the boss is wide open and that is going to put the red team down to 4 points on the core. Now of course with them pushing at the bottom of the map, it seems like they're going to be able to get that bell tower back. Blue team could technically try to collapse into the middle and take that one instead. Especially if they're able to claim a kill, which hasn't happened yet. But Fuzz is just sitting tight and is slowly working this one down. They have perfect vision of Vala and Stukov at the bottom of the map, so yeah, they're getting more damage in here, it's not a problem whatsoever. The level 20 talent has kicked in for Team Yarboy too, of course. So that means that, wow, again, burning the spare for Leoric. And A really likes that talent. Redemption for Uther. And Diablo gets immediately put into a lurking arm. But Tranquility is up, Dibbles is fine. And Leo, yeah, he only gets a single connect. But Sergeant Hammer, ooh, no, not like this. Fuzz fuzzed around a little bit too long and goes down. The Haga at least got a channel, so now it's 6 points on the core against 24. But there is still 1 to take. One at the top right. God, if the Haka moves in and just... If the Haka just steals this one, I would laugh. But yeah, they see it obviously and they wouldn't allow for that to happen, but it would have been funny. So, they're trying to get a bell tower here. Uther channel, so it's gonna be 17 to 6 points. Oh, Arrow is out against Vala. Stun, stun. <laughs> and here comes the Haka. And immediately died. I was like, oh, damn. Moves out, survives, all good. But yeah, that got interesting. They are poking away against that Bell Tower, though. Momentum is everything on Towers of Doom. So if Team Yearboy is able to get a Bell Tower advantage now, that would be quite the achievement. And they are. So Vala with Farflight Quiver just has the range that they need in that situation to work that in properly. And now they are moving down towards the bottom of the map in an attempt to basically do the same thing here. So, well, can they get another one? They have taken the top as well. Guys, they're going for the full barrage here. Blue team is forced to fight now. They are forced to fight this one big time or it is, I mean, I don't want to say over, but it could be. It's six spell towers to two. This is the only one that they're holding. Huh. This flipped completely. It was the blue team that held all the momentum. Now they even give that position up. They're trading towards the middle instead. <laughs> okay, so the barrage has started. They're going to get a couple of trots through. They're trying to defend here. Yeah, they need to work that altar down. Oh, that bell tower, quickly. And, well, they still don't have it. There it is. Can they get a kill? They drag into the death zone. Uther with a divine shield. But, boy, that got clutch. Now they're trying for Leo, as it seems. Dino is still low. They stopped the barrage, but they're down to 14 points. 6 points to 14. So, huh. 
That got interesting. That got interesting quickly. Once that they channel, it's gonna be six points to eight. So the blue team is trying to stabilize. But with Vala hitting level 20, things have changed significantly. So now they're trying to go for the fight. Uther does not have Divine Shield. He has Redemption, but he goes down to Hanzo. The camp is also taken. Diablo attacked and somehow still survives. The disc used against the Haka. Leoric is gone. Sergeant Hammer with the big damage. Uther, of course, is back to business. But it doesn't change. Or it doesn't change what's happening on the scoreboard. Eight points to six. The blue team is still ahead. They have to take a lot of control back, and they're trying right now. They're starting to go for that bottom bell tower, and they are claiming it. Bottom bell tower is claimed. The Haka is now up at the top and can possibly try and retake this one too. So yeah, five bell towers against three, but all of a sudden. Yeah, boys team is back to business. <laughs> oh, it's just Towers of Doom, honestly. Towers of Doom time and time again. And they're back at the bottom of the map. Trying to do the same thing here. Look how, look how much damage they're doing with this. I mean, they have so much damage through Dino alone. And then you put Maiev into that equation too. Arrow! Big connect! And the disc is out against the Haka before he can drop his own ult. Could still use it right now. Barbecue. Eh, and Sergeant Hammer is dead. If they don't get a kill. Yeah, well, they get Stukov. Is that going to be enough, though? As damage, they only have Hanzo. Cure performed so far. Very, very good. Mm, had a great performance here. Performed well, but still. In this situation, can they pull that off? One of the supports is gone. And one of the interrupts, of course. But there's the fight at the top right now, potentially. And a lot of the ults are actually gone. They're pretty large. All of the ults are gone. Everything's on cooldown. First channel is already happening. Mayev is getting four points for the team. That puts the core down to four. So, yeah. You need this one. If the red team wins that altar, it's over. There's the push with the Entomb dropped by Leoric. Yeah, Diablo's still fine for now. Gets away. The disc against Hanzo. That's a problem. And there's the channel. No, they're not interrupting. What are you doing? What are you doing? They throw the game. They just ignore it. Cure jumps over. That's GG team. Yeah, boy wins. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Kalda TV. Game number two! Well, not interrupting my F turned out to be a bit of a mistake. <laughs> Seems like Hanzo got caught with the disc mid-jump. I'm not quite sure if he actually yoloed out the ult afterwards, or if that was just me looking at the minimap the wrong way. But I, somebody needed to interrupt that. So they just moved up towards the top and were able to sneak in a channel with my F and win the game. <laughs> I already thought that the positioning of the blue team around the middle bell tower was a little bit strange and that they should be more worried about their uh, altar but yeah team yeah boy turning the game around after they got slaughtered throughout the mid game we're looking pretty okay here now that we're going into match point number one we'll see what the red team can pull off it is the map choice actually of team cure so after losing the last map they have the choice whether they want to uh, start well, whether they want to decide the map or have first pick first bam and they decided that they prefer to go for a map choice and locked in Dragonshire. So, Globals, Vikings, I mean, what's the, what's the move here? We've seen a lot of Vikings banned out on other maps throughout the day, but Dragonshire... It was actually back in the day when Dragonshire was a Viking map, which was really fun. Like, the two, uh, the Spanish brothers were very, very fun here. Shad was another one that also played Vikings on Dragonshire. And what a lot of these guys were actually doing is using Balog as a topside hero and then proxy waves between the fort and the keep and applying a lot of lane pressure that way, which was pretty cool. But, well, with that, we now have Dehaka and Sylvanas as the early picks. So, Bloodcool is going for some global action. Falstad as a counter? Or are they just okay with Dehaka being run here the way that, uh, well... The way that Team Cure obviously wants to control the side lane. 
No, they started their own draft off with Jojo. Always a great pick. Maybe interesting what Dino's gonna pick here. We got Rhaegar and we Yeah, of course. It is it is Dragonshire after all, and we are going for an original play. So Zagara gets played on Dragonshire a lot these days and picked by all kinds of servers. But the one player that actually did that for the longest time first was Dino. So right now he locks Zagara in. Is that going to win them the game? Are they going to dominate that bot lane the way that he is going to intend to? I've seen Zagara backfire so many times, honestly, it's a little bit nuts. She can work out beautifully well, don't get me wrong. But she's also been uh, crushed a ton. And a lot of the times when Zagara was played lately on Dragonshire in such a big position was actually in the context of tournaments that have draft restrictions. So where you can't play a hero more than once, where maybe some heroes are banned and some such stuff. That makes it a lot easier for you to pick Zagara in a position where a lot of other heroes that are strong against her have already been taken out of the pool, but now that's not really the case. So Zeratul gets banned for exactly that reason, but for, you have Genji still out there, amongst others. So, are we going to get Genji in this, or will they just say like, now nah, we're going to deal with it a different way? I mean... You could go Genji Anduin, if you wanted to. Anubarak and Malfurion. They decide against it, obviously. So, Anubarak engage, Malfurion roots, Dehaka also with potential follow-ups on a Tong if he jumps into the fight. Still need the side laner that faces off against Dehaka. Blaze is banned. Urel is up, Hogger is up, uh, Leo can still be picked. So, plenty of good choices. Actually, sorry, Hogger is banned too, so he's also out. Leaving you with two, three options here. Well, two or three realistic options. Ah, <laughs> now we're talking! They go for the Vikings! I like it! Oh god, I was so hoping that this would happen. Finally we get a Vikings game. They've been banned so many times and now we have Vikings. Alright, let's go! Vikings against Team Yeah Boy. Uh, sorry, from Team Yeah Boy against Team Cure. Cure has to make the final decision. He's going for the final pick. As we're heading into Dragonshire, they decide in favor of Tracer. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Cure against Team Yearboy. Game number two, match point number one for the red team. On the left, we have Cure with Tracer. Valamar Malfurion. Fuzz is playing Sylvanas for the blue team with Brandon on Anubarak and Bloodcool on Dehaka. The real party is with the red team though, Team Yeah Boy. Dino is playing Zagara, we have Vince on Jojo, and Yeah Boy is playing the Vikings! Whoop whoop! Chaotic on Thrall, and we got Banana Age on Rhaegar. So, not only do we have Zagara, but we also have the Vikings just dancing around and doing their thing. I like it! So, what is the red team gonna do here? What are they able to do? If the Viking play... Oh, actually, first of all, it's the blue team that pushes towards the top with their Sylvanas move immediately and starts to absolutely murder stuff. So, half the hit points are gone. I actually thought they would be able to do a little bit more than that. That looked really, really dangerous. But not quite enough damage yet. Then again, decent defense too. I, for a second, really thought that we would look potentially at some kind of uh, pff, some kind of move where they just like go around and try and push for for the team responds in kind at the other side of the map does the exact same thing. But yeah, not quite. So that didn't really happen. Now, with that said and done, we're now looking at the Vikings controlling the lanes as best as they can. Minions have obviously, sorry, mercenaries have spawned. And Zagara is going to help out with this, but will eventually move down to the bottom of the map. Thrall is already claiming some of the camps himself. Yeah, and we're going to slowly see how much that four man is going to do for them, how much they can push down with it. We've got a build build for Anubarak. We have on level one uh, some Olaf specs with Olaf the Stout. And we're getting now the Trolling Thunder for Thrall. So, double control already established. Again, if you're running the Vikings here, then obviously this is something that's going to happen throughout the game. The question is how they're going to react against it. 
That is also a bit annoying. Damn, they got murdered there. So no kills, but both of them dropping very low. Having to tap and restore a couple of their points. Interrupt attempt in the middle. Vikings are down at the bottom of the map trying to retake. And now that we have the push up at the top with the move rug moving in from the side, Zagara is able to dodge the stun. So that four man is starting to do serious work with the camp that they took previously. With level four talents, we get again the envenomed spines for Zagara, and we have, as usual, the Frost Wolf pack. So they're breaking through the top side wall, basically. Not quite there yet, but still serious damage on that bad boy. Now the defense is solid as well. They didn't lose too much. This was actually a dangerous push. This could have been a lot worse for them if they didn't pay attention here. But it is still annoying, you know, that you have to uh, also deal with your mid lane where the Vikings are pushing. Baylog is currently sitting here. Now uh, can move in with Thrall, do a bit of work there too. And down at the bottom of the map, it's only the hard guy. And I mean, he can take one of the Vi Well, actually, he might not be able to take one of the Vikings out. But now with Zagara saying hello, he will have to retreat. Baylog is already there. Yeah, Zagara. Now Eric is there too. Dino. He might have underestimated that. Is trying to dodge a Tong that just doesn't come. And now, no! Blood Cool moved into the rage of the tower. Ah, oh, that would have been quite the play. If he 1v1 Dino to death here, that would have been something. Nice body block. No freaking way. Twice? These guys are escape artists. Bloodcool kinda outplaying Zagara at the bottom map was pretty big though. I mean, Dino survived, don't get me wrong. But without that tower just taking aim, that would have been the end of Zagara for sure. Basically, Zagara was trying to dodge a Tong that never came. And because it delayed so long, it just Dino just lost hit point after hit point after hit point. As it stands, we still don't have first blood though. Nobody has died yet. Everybody is still going for structures. Everybody is still trying to see what they can do uh, in this situation. So, uh, yeah, it's an interesting, uh, an interesting back and forth that we're getting. A little bit more action here in the middle now. We really destroyed that. The only, the one, the only ones that are dying so far, honestly, the Vikings. But I'm not quite sure if I'm counting that at first blood or not, because everybody else is still alive and kicking here. But yeah, can I go for Brandon? Nah, not enough yet. Alright. Not really able to take him down or anything. Now, oh, the move for the bomb! On Thrall! And he dies before he even completes his level 4 quest talent. So, Thrall is gone. He gets destroyed, and that's the actual real first blood in the game. Again, Vikings don't count. They just don't. Well, they count a third. So. Oh, he should be dead. Yeah, he's, de <laughs> he's, de he's dead. <laughs> no way. Tracer gets murdered by Rega. He's the last one to jump in, and that is the end of uh, Cure. So, it is even on kills once again. A little bit of uh, two more play on the map by Zegara. Not really too much vision granted, but working around as much as they can with this. Oh, Dehaka killed by Zegara and Thrall at the bottom of the map while this all plays out. And even some pressure against Malfurion in the middle. And that's a that's a Dragonite. Yep. Rega. Rega. No! Can they kick him? <laughs> Fuzz with the last second jump over the wall. Uh, there's nothing better than the Dragonite actually kicking someone to death. It's like one of the funniest kills ever in my opinion. So I would have loved to see that happen here, but he's able to jump out. So kudos to Sylvanas for making that play. And also getting a kill against Thrall right now. Well, top side, this pressure still applies. And now it's Tracer that is dead again. Yep, damage over time is going to wreck her. So Tracer is gone too. This is quite the game here. Four kills to three. With the Dragonite, they weren't able to accomplish a lot. She's still pushing. Nearly killing Johanna, but Fuzz went a little bit too deep. Dehaka, okay. Coming in again, and now it's Daidu that has to mow up. Ults are out. Daidu, the root, the ancestral, and he's alive. <laughs> and instead, we're getting an attack against Sylph. They get saved by Malfurion's tranquility. This game is fun. We are all over the place now. Brandon is about to go down. Nope, he gets saved. Yeah, this is an awesome game. I love it. Viking games are awesome. 
Ah, and Slingshot Eric nearly took Malfurion out. God, they're all over the place now. This is glorious, honestly, I love it. Quest still not completed by Thrall. He keeps getting killed whenever he gets even close. And, yeah. So, now we have the next camp about to be taken. Moving straight up for for this one. Attempting to, uh, to claim it and maybe even push with it. But we see the same thing on the blue team side. So, they're going to have a counterweight to all of this. If it plays out like that. Then, again, Brandon, Bloodcool. They're still pushing here. And over on the left side now, oh, yep, there's the kill against Sylvanas. Now the red team is starting to get really aggressive and making some plays. They want that camp. They might get that camp, but the blue team is not giving it up. They really want that thing. But everybody's jumping in. They steal the camp. Damn, they actually got it. Thrall completes his quest and then does he die? No, he makes it. Thrall made it. There's the more. They're still hoping to fight through this. Tranquility used. Zagara on the run, and they get out. But boy, imagine them actually winning the fight and taking that camp. If they do that, then it is an absolutely different story. Because in that scenario, you have not camp against camp going up at the top lane. You all of a sudden have a double camp pushing for the top side forward, and with the pressure power of Sylvanas and some of the others, that could have destroyed the first structure in the game. So, yeah, that was pretty good for the blue team. I mean, again, they, they lost the hero initially, but grabbing that camp and not letting go, winning that fight, essentially, that was important. If that doesn't happen, they are in some serious, serious trouble. So, very, very important move by them, and yeah, thankfully for them, it worked out. But it's still very even. Blue team is a bit ahead in experience, but everybody is still fighting. It's just fighting, 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 and there's the kill. It's a trade of frontline tanks. But with Tracer moving through them like hot butter through cheese, we now have Thrall dying too. And it's just damage, damage from Cure all over the place. Vikings maybe with an attempted sneak at the Dragonite, but that gets shut down quickly too. No chance. Yep, no opportunity here. They were guarding the spot. Not a problem. And now Eric at the bottom is trying to defend, but not able to do too much here. And Zagara! He's nearly dying. Oh my god, they're actually staying around. <laughs> I was about to say, Zagara's gonna fall, but instead, they're trying to take Sylvanas out. Rhaegar with a jump could have been able to seal that, potentially. But Banana Age, not a chance to get close enough and really take him down. So, uh, now we have six kills to five. But we have also a leading experience for Team Cure. That is something that we still have to highlight, because... There was a Dragonite claimed by the red team, but it didn't do enough damage. Oh, Zagara, not like this. Yeah, gets kicked into the circus over here. That's a little bit of a curiosity. And now that they're going for Thrall, they get him too, of course. So, nine kills to five. Team Cure? Yeah, they're just saying, boys, we're not gonna lose like this. This isn't happening. We're gonna shut you down hard now, and right at this moment, it is working. They're not only going to take the significant lead in experience with a level 16 talent. And it's kicking in in a moment. They have a chance to maybe even get a Dragonite and see if they can play around the objective. Maybe take another fort out because the first one has fallen. The second one as a fort up would be awesome. Yeah, there's the root. Dragonite has been taken. The Ancestral. Boy, that timing. Here once Rega can't get him. But yeah, the Maw is also missing. But Cure is now dead. He recalled away from the Maw and finds himself just trapped in a corner. So that's a kill. The Dragonite with damage against the uh, object, uh, against the, the, the fort though. But the one thing that I still have to say is that as Sagara is now marching towards her next uh, talent here, she is going to do a significant amount of damage. And then on 20 is going to get boosted even further. So there are, there's a lot of late game potential for the red team. A little bit similar to what we saw in Towers of Doom, where at the beginning and in the mid-game, it was the blue team that was doing exceptionally well, and then things started to fall apart. Now, let's not forget that the Vikings are also going to get a lot more comeback ready once that 16 is available, aka now, because they have Largen in charge from uh, Olaf, and can use that to stun people even further. So that tier here is something where I think uh, it starts to become a lot more tricky, and <laughs> it's already happening. The aggression is still there from the red team, but now they have a bit more firepower to follow through on all of it. They take the Haka down, 
And yeah, with all of the roaches and everything, they just say, you know what, we're gonna go try and go for that keep. Sorry, the fort. They immediately stopped though. So there is some resistance here. Vikings, and ooh, that's a kill! Yeah, that shouldn't really happen. I mean, first of all, you already killed the Haka, and now you're losing heroes just like that. But at least Thrall gets the counter kill and dodges the stun from an Uberak. Nice! Yeah. Sylvanas, yeah, it's, it, this is an awesome game. I mean, come on, the in series is real fun. They are jumping left, right, right, left, hit after hit, and it's honestly awesome. Blood Cool comes in after he died. Ancestral is out again. Triple more. And where's the damage? They're trying to go for Sylvanas. And they take her down, the Vikings, this time. And just look at Anubarak. His hit point pool just disappears. A little bit of a magic trick. Pulling a full Houdini. We have 20 kills. Guys, we're 12, 13 minutes into the game. And we have 20 kills right now. And this time they're going for structures. This time they're gonna try and end this at the top. The fort is destroyed. First one to fall over on the blue team side. Damage output, what do we have? What does Zagara have? Zagara's at 53,000. Sylvanas is at 58,000. Tracer, 57k, so the two top damage dealers in the game are finding themselves on the blue team side. But again, the last couple of minutes have looked a little bit different here. Now they go for the Harker again. He pops his essence. Can they slow him down enough and get the damage connected? No, instead it is again a push against Jojo. And she falls again. The Vikings, they're grabbing the Dragonite though. Dragonite in the middle. Chaotic with some extra damage and is able to push out. Middle of the map. I mean, Dragonite is pretty much alone, but it's only a Viking, so it doesn't matter too much. Even if they lose him here, it's going to be fine. So they burn that down super quickly, and since Johanna is missing, the rest of the team can't really do a whole lot. But they still get the the thingy down to 50% of its HP. But these Dragonites are not doing a whole lot, because the blue team seems to be getting a counter kill every single time that things are getting dicey for them. It's still a wild situation though. Yeah, nearly all of the Vikings are killed now. Don't have their ult either. So, it is a bit of a crazy game. Well, another fort is about to get destroyed. The Haga is chasing Vikings at the bottom of the map as we speak. And the red team will have to try and recover here. Now, as I said before, level 20 talents are as usual game changers for a lot of these guys. And I think that Zegara and her damage output as all of this continues is going to get pretty wild. And on top of that, of course, you have also Rhaegar with her doubles on Ancestral, which is also going to be pretty huge. That should be quite the game changer for them. Mm, yeah. But first of all, you have the blue team with that 20. So yeah, blue team kicks 20 in. Total recall is now in. That is making Cure even more dangerous. He's already annoying enough as is right now, but this is making you more dangerous than before. Blinded by the light, the double ancestral is in. Final fort falls. The outer ring of defense on the red team side is gone. Zagara, as expected, has gone into the pack instinct. So, yep, yeah, that's going to be very dangerous. And the Vikings went for Fury of the Swarm. So! Fury of the Storm. I would actually be an awesome talent. Fury of the Swarm? Count me in. It's like a Zagara and uh, Viking hybrid. Honestly, if Heroes was a little bit of a different game, I, I mean, I know they didn't do it. Uh, they probably didn't do it because it would have made things a little bit too complicated for the audience and players too. But imagine if they were combo talents. Like talents that you can only unlock when you play with another hero in the same team, for example. Like, I don't know, if you play Tychus and Rain on one team, you have something that you can unlock at level 20, or you get some passive boost or something like that. You could theoretically come up with a couple of interesting ideas of certain combos of heroes that either empower a specific talent that you can take with a passive, uh, something like that. So uh, you get your normal talents, but if you play another hero, then you unlock a second part to that same talent. Things like that. There's some really interesting uh, things that you could possibly come up with. Doesn't only have to be characters that play together from the same universe. But this would have been an interesting approach to make certain combos maybe a bit cooler. 
or just to have some really fun interactions. We already see that in just the voice interactions between heroes, right? So could do that also for like a fun game mode. I mean, it's not in the cards anymore, but might have been at some time. 22 kills, 17 minutes in now, and with both teams on level 20. Things are definitely getting interesting uh, around the objective. But there's a one team that is heavily ahead in structures. That's the blue team. That's Cure's team. They are hoping for game number three. Mm, yeah. And now, with Rega having even more impact into all of this. Here's the root. All right. Some damage coming out. Blessed shield being used too. Yeah, that did not do anything for them. They used some ults there, at least one. And it honestly affected nobody. So, hmm. They are poking. Cigar on 63,000 damage. Tracer on 69,000. Uh, yeah, well. I'm still a little bit curious who is going to walk away with the next team fight. Because things have been wild over the last couple of minutes. I mean, they have been uh, at each other's neck the entire time. Vikings will grant them a little bit more control over the objective, I guess. But yeah, this is getting really interesting. Everybody's trapping. Everybody's trying to just sit in a bush, trap and make a big play here. But so far, it just hasn't happened yet. Nobody has been able to make a big move in any of these situations. Now that we are seeing the Vikings go for it again. Yep, that's a Dragonite. Because down at the bottom, Anubarak was trying to take over, but Olaf even survived as he moved in and stopped it. So now we have another Dragonite. That's the big problem for the blue team, that with all of that global presence that the Vikings bring and the ability to control multiple points at the same time, they are losing objective after objective. And that will result, as you can see here, in structures taken out. Normally, the big advantage of the blue team was that when it happened, there was usually a kill at the same time against the red team but that's not the case here so it translates directly into a four destroyed and now at the bot lane it could technically be a second one that gets eliminated so they're gonna try the same thing here once more and they have a realistic chance of making that work and yeah take that out Zagara, Ancestral, number one number two they still want her isolation bit late but quickly enough Blood cool gets attacked. His Dehaka impact is honestly sick city. Another big drag, just as I say it. More isolating thrall more than anything. He has to jump out, but Tracer is gone, and that's a disaster. She is the top damage dealer for the team. Cure with a massive impact for his boys. And now they're turning on Brandon. I mean, don't they all? Brandon about to disappear from the fight one way or another. He quickly retreats. And they start taking camps. Vikings are being chased a little bit, but this is going to spell out the end of the fort at the bottom of the map. Zagara has also taken over in damage, so she is currently top damage in the game. And is running this even more through the bottom of the map, thanks to those siege giants and waves that are now coming in. Tracer for another 20 seconds still gone, that's plenty of time to break through that wall, at least partially. Which is what they're doing here. So, well, can we take the entire thing down? Tracer will be back in a bit, but yep, looking good so far. Also, Vikings are currently on 66 stacks for their baseline, for the Viking Horde. That is pretty decent regeneration that they currently have here. As the game continues and they're getting more, it's going to be uh, true even more so than that, obviously. But yes, Vikings are regenerating hit points pretty quickly from here on out. And you will have sustain. If you are able to get away from a fight, whenever that will be, you can essentially just traverse to another lane. And by the way you arrive, you are on full HP again. You can start to push it out further. The map is basically now controlled by the red team. Now, it's still dead even in structures. And just one good team fight can win it for you. Doesn't matter if it's the red team or the blue team. One good team fight here and you got it. Tracer has been the biggest threat so far. If they can shut down Cure again, they can do a lot here. Look at the siege damage, by the way, of the Vikings. 240,000 right now. 130,000 and 110,000 for Johanna and Zagara. <laughs> this is just nuts. <laughs> this is really something. Zagara is back up at the top. They're just checking everywhere here. Tracer shows herself at the bottom of the map. 
And with 22 minutes on the map now, if you get another Dragonite, and the Vikings could already try and channel that, right? If the Vikings move in and claim this, that's a DK. That, wow, okay, they're in the middle now. All right. Yeah, if not for that, that would have been a death, uh, uh, yeah, a, a death knight. That would definitely be a death knight opportunity. Not a dragon knight. If you get it right now, that's a death knight. This is beating everything to death. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess they're sitting at the. T Imagine this game without a global at least on their side. So yeah, still poking this out a little bit. Vikings all alive and kicking. They just can't control, can't get control over that bottom shrine. That's the only problem they have right now. But they are sending Zagara to the top, going up against Blood Cool here, and yeah, they're pushing out the bot lane. And the blue team, upon seeing Zagara, is starting to push a little bit into the middle and trying to get some headway here. There's still creep tumors on the ground. Oh, <laughs> fuzz! Get split from the team for a moment. Those are the scary spots. If you, you're just sitting there like, am I out of range of Sundering, Blessed Shield, more, whatever could come my way. There's somebody going to flank. Vikings are still pushing at the top. The Harker, that's a bit poked, but they got Siege Giants now too. Alright, Vince is ready, gets stunned. A bit of damage so far, so easy. There is the Harker and instant more. Instant more from Dino, no hesitation, and now the double control forcing the blue team into the middle to defend. So now the positional game has completely changed. Now they're sitting here in the middle trying to defend all of this. Good damage against the red team though. Lots of damage against them. And the Wailing Arrow. And Thrall is just dead. Thrall is dead in a second. The Vikings jumped into the back and were trying to apply pressure. But Valamar reacted instantly and saved the day. And they killed Jojo too. So, yep. That changed the game significantly. That double kill was massive. As I said before, one big team fight is all that you need here. So, Cure is taking the top control, and that's a Dragonite. There's nobody to contest anything here. The yeah, boy can delay this slightly, and does, but he's not going to be able to prevent it. He's going to buy them a few more seconds, but that's all that he can do here. Dodges out on a lot of the stuns, but there's the Dragonite. And now, 24 minutes in? That should be a keep. Zagara? <sighs> Yeah, still, you have Siege Giants. Oh, you have four Siege Giants. Well, two and a half. Two. <laughs> wah, wah. Uh, but yeah, the, the wall is already open. That's a key. Question is simply, can they get more? Probably not. I mean, I don't really think so. Dragonite is already losing hit points quickly. They now got everybody back up on the map. DK is attempting to do a little bit of damage here. But there's now Hydras in and that Dragonite disappears as quickly as the shield on the core. But I'm not sure if they can really end the game here. The shield is gone, but do you really commit to that 5 versus 5 Yeah, I highly doubt it. They will probably have to walk back here, and they do. The core is taking a bit of damage as you would expect, but nothing that forces the issue yet. I don't think that ending the game was ever in the cards here unless you get another kill. So Zigara, 91,000 damage. Sylvanas by now, nearly to 100k. 97,000. But the dynamic in the game has flipped again. It's now clearly the blue team that is ahead. So blue team is ahead, has taken the lead. And well, can the red team recover from this? They've given up a lot. That double kill against them hurt. And now they have to deal with the bot lane pressure. Vikings are not going to have a problem with that. But it's still the same issue. If your opponent chains up their stuns and things like Wailing Arrow, then you just see heroes disappear. Which is exactly what, it, what happened to them. They had a hero, and a second later it was just gone. So... Uh, they're trying to wrap around here, see if they can maybe get a kill. Uh, Nubarak! Are they going for another stun? Yep! Ah, the Sundering comes too late. That is a recall into hell. <laughs> oh, those are the moments when you're really in a spot where you're like, please don't die, please don't die, please don't die. <laughs> yeah, if they had another stun, that would have been really tricky for him. But who gets the kill? It seems like Jojo is... No, she's alive! Jojo is alive! What about Thrall though? They're all trying to get out here and they do. 
How is everybody still in the game in this fight? That's crazy to me. Olaf with a hit here. But yeah, that's absolutely insane to me. I mean, seriously. Now another little trap as they move towards the middle. Vikings still down at the bottom. Oh, the choke point! <laughs> no! Vikings, can they go for cure the stun? He recalls out and is still fine. Holy hell, that battle! Look how many heroes crossed over to the 100,000 hit points. And there it is, finally, kill number one. And very likely... I mean, this could be the end of the game now. With the front line gone again, with the tank eliminated, I just don't see how they're saving this. I just don't see it. Once the Dragonite is taken, the game is over. And they gotta know this. I have no idea. Like, they're trying to trap and flank them. I don't think there's a chance that Dragonite is going to murder you. Even if you do something. And they can't get the kill there either. So, yeah, that, that is game. This failing puts the end to it. Zagara is dead too. The second this failed, the game was over. And, yeah, the DK is already just marching through. We're 28 game minutes into this game now. There's absolutely no chance to do anything about it. So, this is going to be a final map between these two teams. I mean, nicely done. Very nice play. Good aggression that we got from them. And that, as you can see, is a tie in the series. Congratulations. We have Team Cure with a victory on Dragonshire. GG, well played. Garden of Terror, game number three. We've been here already. Uh, midway through the draft, actually it's not quite true. Just before they went for the first pick, uh, we had all of a sudden, I think it was Vince who disconnected. And they had to reset the entire draft. I was just about to say, Garden of Terror is the biggest map in the pool with the most mercenary camps. Therefore, Hogger usually is really strong here. I would have loved a smaller map. I personally like it when the map is just a bit smaller, that usually creates more fights and opportunities for the teams. And on the other hand, the red team specifically has been very aggressive. But there are a couple of strategies that you could play on such a big map. I mean, Samoro comes to mind, Vikings, now that we have Lucio, you can play some Sylvanas and Greymane shenanigans. And the one strategy that I personally really liked, I think it was the Cats that played it, was Chogal bringing him to 20 get the cooldown reduction on the death timer and just YOLO into structures and trade your life for them. That was kind of fun. Now that we have Lucio already claimed, they're going immediately for Sylvanas on the blue team. Plus Johanna. I would still think that given the circumstances here and the situation we're in, some of these guys are gonna go for some uh, fun picks. But then we get the Haka, so this is just looking very vanilla and quite strong actually. Hanzo, the Haka, Hogger ignored. Maybe for the blue team? I mean, if anybody bans it, it's gonna be the red team now. They already have their, their side laner, so there's absolutely no reason for Team Cure to do th something about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm still looking at Dino over here and I'm thinking, okay, what could he possibly go for? So, banning Varian. It's actually interesting. Varian is not really someone that I necessarily had on my list at this point, but Varian comms are not that uncommon on Garden of Terror. You see that actually quite a lot. But with Lucio as your support, I would have expected a different strategy than uh, them trying to go for a sniper comp. So an interesting ban there. A red team. Are they getting rid of Hogger? Yes or no? Three supports ban. They allow Hogger through. But they leave the opponent. I mean, what are you going to get here? Anduin is a possible choice, obviously. We could go Deckard, so... Uh, triple support ban. Rhaegar is also quite nice with the lightning shield to accelerate anything uh, that wants to take structures down. There's Hogger and we get Uther together with him. So, Cure can still go for a very aggressive... I mean, he could go Genji. Dragon Blade, uh, Divine Shield, Genji. Let's go. We go old school today. And they have Hogger. Plus Sylvanas. 
That's also quite a bit of push power too. Well, main tank still missing. We get Diablo, all right, and we get Greymane. This is what I said earlier. If you get Sylvanas, Greymane together with Lucio, you can really play around the opponent extremely well. Now you have Lucio, Greymane, that also allows you to rotate from lane to lane, go for structures or heroes. So, uh, if anything, I'm surprised that they're not going for any crazy picks here. Uh, but, well, final pick, Cure. What is he playing? Are we going to get something like Genji? Or are we just going to come in with... It's Tracer again. Okay, I like it. <laughs> the hero that I was just about to mention was like, yeah, probably not. But yeah, I like it. Tracer can get the Divine Shield from Uther if need be. You have Sylvanas Tracer for damage. Gun of Terror, everybody. Cure did well with Tracer before. Can he pull it off again? Final map in the best of three series. Team Cure against Team Cavalry. Final map in the best of three series. And incidentally, also the final map in the round robin phase of the tournament. For the second time, we have Cure on Tracer, we get Blood Cool on Hogger. Valamar for the blue team is playing Uther, and we get Brandon on Johanna. Guarding that frontline, and Fuzz on Sylvanas. The right side of the map for the red team, after they just lost on Dragonshire, we get Yeboy on the Haka, Banana H on Lucio, Dino is playing Greymane this time around. We got Vince on Diablo. And Chaotic is playing Hanzo. So, each team has some really, really nice tools here. Hogga for camps. Sylvanas to push with them. And you have Tracer for all the damage against heroes. And of course, quick dives into the back line of the enemy's team. Something that Cure pulled off uh, time and time again in the previous series. And then on the other side, you got that lucio Graming combo. We got the Haka, uh, some global rotational play. <laughs> and Banana, Banana H, you can already tell, is just going to be a nuisance throughout the entire game. He's already starting to uh, just like jump in and poke away. It's like all these Overwatch heroes, I mean seriously. They are all annoying. Name an Overwatch hero that is not annoying. They are all annoying. Like every single one of them. Hansel, ugh. Lucio, blah. Tracer. Oh my god, and then you got Genji, you know, I mean, honestly, you can down the entire list, and there's not a single one where you're like, oh yeah, that guy's actually awesome. Name an Overwatch hero you would like to drink a beer with. Don't think there are too many that come to mind. But yeah. Now, as we have, topside, Tracer is sitting there, just zipping away. She's like a mosquito. I would love if there was like some kind of a hero in the game that has one of these, you know, electric uh, mosquito trap thingies, and then Tracer just buzzes around, and every uh, now and then it's like, Poof. and yeah, Tracer's gone. I actually bought one of those. I said it the other time actually, and I was like asking people like, hey, like, do you have any experience? Are these things worth it? Like, any personal experience? And people told me like, yeah, actually, uh, we got one of those. They're amazing. So I got myself one. And it's incredible. God, I love these things. They're so awesome. And every single time you hear like this, tick, you, you, there's a smile just creeping up your face. And uh, yeah, it's crazy good. So can wholeheartedly recommend. So far I've only one, but I'm definitely going to get myself another one. So yeah, they're way better than I expected. Anyways, that being said, our Nexus Mosquito is still zipping around at the top uh, against Greymane. And, yeah, well, Hogger is now slowly going for some uh, additional camps. Running in the battle, in with the Money Pig. Oh, yeah. So, Money Pig action by him. Brandon over on the left, going up against Chaotic. And slowly the first few seats are coming up. He's, of course, just poking. Tracer dropped a little bit low here for just a second. So, obviously, Dino <laughs> is making little moves like this to weave in one attack after another. And Q doesn't really like it all that much. In need of a bit of help at least. That's the rotation that came in. Hanzo goes down at the bottom of the map and while that happens, Cure sniffed out Banana Age who thought he uh, would be sneaky to zip in from the side and do some work, but nope. Not on their watch. So, while Lucio is still moving from uh, one spot to the next, we have the, another camp also taken. They're starting to uh, use the Siege Giants against the red team at the top, but they are countering with some mercenaries on their own. And with Greymane, if they get on that wall, Greymane gets in Worgen form, he would be able to take a tower or two down fairly quickly. So it's important that Hogger still deals with that. The seat obviously claims, and now down at the bottom left, you have the seat taken by Team Cure. 
which was better for them. Only the single kill from earlier. I know we have level 7 versus level 7, and that gives us also the quick silver bullets. And, well, we got the feeding frenzy. As, as a kill against Uther. So, the man that hates Snowman uh, gets dropped. Full on four man gank against him. Dino, <laughs> I don't want to interrupt. But with Lucio being around, he doesn't even have to uh, have to half back. So, yeah, he's still totally okay there. Now, again, huge map, obviously. Garden Terrors. I, even when you get the Garden Terrors, honestly, I really think that the first set of Garden Terrors might not even do all that much damage. If you look at the two teams, basically every single one of them has some really good tools against Garden Terrors. So, the earlier ones might not even do all that much. I mean, always assuming, of course, that everybody is still alive. But, yeah. Uh, Still pushing the top side out. Tracer is finding herself solo laning over and over again. This time she's going up at the bottom of the map against uh, Dehaka. While Greymane is taking some additional camps for the team. And with the next seed up. This is actually an important one. Because the position is not exclusively strong for the red team. So if the blue team, if Team Cure is now able to lock a second seed in. That would apply a ton of pressure as the game continues against Team Yeah Especially with the one afterwards. Now... It's, it's, a, it's a game of mercenaries, as long as they are still up. The seed is also ready, but nobody has committed to it yet. Red team is slowly making their way over. And Jojo... Nah, Brandon is moving out. Get some hits in, uh, like Chaotic comes in and uh, connects a few arrows, but not too much that he can pull off here. Still some uh, mercenaries in the middle of the map now. With the help of Sylvanas, they're rotating down. And they're actually taking down half that wall. Another tower about to fall, and they got level 10. Just a small advantage, but well, there it is. Both teams lock it in, so now it's time to get some shockwaves out, some arrows, get those stuns in, and we even get an apocalypse! Apoc play from Diablo, no lightning breath this time, and we get go for the throat. I know them also against Sylvanas, of course, and Tracer, more importantly. <laughs> Dong, 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 dong. All day, every day. That he's not getting dizzy is quite something. Now, it's a seed for a seed. Yeah. No insane pressure against the red team. Blue team didn't really go for this. But, we have them pressure through the top a bit further. Grey man, doing solid work. Getting assists. Tracer is here. Not so sure if they can do uh, really anything about it. I mean, obviously, Joanna was waiting to see if maybe with the blessed shield she can t uh, t trace up to allow her to go and get a kill. That's still more or less the case. Uther is now coming in, so blessed shield would be followed up. But with the yeah, blessed shield, that's the follow up, and bye bye, Dino. Exactly like that. Blessed shield is out. Uther gets the second stun. And then Tracer comes in, connects the damage, and it is Greymane that dies. Yeah, at the bottom of the map, they were already able to take a fort out, so uh, the Harka is pretty much uh, trying to guard the wall on the keep. But with the first fort destroyed, with another kill for the blue team, passive experience is now slowly increasing. So they will pull farther ahead as this continues. Seed positioning is not really all that great for Team Cure. Next one will be better, but here it's an easy one for the red team. So they are walking away with the two. I was about to say, ah, actually no, with the two-one lead. I expected a shield flare. Brandon didn't use it, so I assume that he was on cooldown. Huh? Yeah, that was a bit weird. Tracer. <laughs> okay, Cure. What? Yeah, Cure went a little bit too deep, I guess. So he's down. Arrow. And, well, Sylvanas is now gone too. Damn, all of a sudden they're getting kills, aren't they? So, Hansel's arrow, even slowing them down a little bit. Divine Shield has now been used. But they're going for Uther. That fight isn't over. They still want him. Lucio is accelerating them forward and nearly helped them to catch up with Uther even further. That could have been another kill. Jojo is also at the bottom of the map. So, all of a sudden, it is the red team that moved in and starts to take another fort out. Yeah. Just as Team Cure looked like they might take control of the game and did a great job going for that bottom fort, snuck that in. Now all of a sudden we have the exact opposite happening. Just after one or two kills, Team Yeah Boy says like, wait what? 
We are in perfect position to take that forward. We're going to get some kills with that. And all of a sudden, uh, we're closing that gap. Especially that exp the uh, passive experience advantage is now negated. So no more gain advantage there. That was honestly mostly important. Yeah, quick interrupt here, but it's going to be two seeds to two. I don't think that anybody... Well, actually, are they fully committing to this? Nah. They slow this down and delay it, but this is not... I'm not going to commit to that. So, Valama, he grabs it, which means that the next one is going to get us Garden Terrors. One way or another, we're going to get Garden Terrors on the next seed. That's going to be a thing. Ten minutes into the game, two kills to three. Damage, we're looking at 15,000 from Tracer, 16,000 from Greymane. Very even on damage numbers. We have, didn't have too many fights, honestly. Just five kills in total. Every two minutes, one kill right now. Structurally... I don't even know if we can really call out a winner there either. So it is an extremely even game, which honestly will be broken once the next seed spawns and is being fought over. The team that gets the Garden Terrors will at least for a time pull ahead here. At least he will assume so. The only scenario where that doesn't happen is you get the the Garden Terror and then you lose one or two heroes and you can't do anything with them. Oh, Diablo. Okay, plus shield. Yeah, and that's a kill. Arrow came out from Hanzo, trying to stop the more or less inevitable. Diablo goes down, his corpse gets kicked around. How is it, by the way, possible that Diablo has a corpse on the ground and he already respawns and is back in an Nexus? Doesn't that mean there's two Diablos at the same time? This is some weird clone version that we're talking about. He doesn't get resurrected. He still has a ragdoll. He still has a body on the ground, on the map, that it gets kicked around while he respawns. There's some really weird shenanigans going on. I don't think he's reborn or anything. He gets weirdly cloned and uh, this is highly suspicious. I want an explanation. Like, somebody is lying here. So, yeah, let me see. Da, 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 he will resurrect. He didn't get resurrected. They made a copy. They made a copy. That's what's going on here. Ooh, that shockwave is going nowhere. Talking about things that going. That, on the other hand, is a problem. I mean, damn. Dino is just pushing the side lane out right now. <laughs> He's like, gun terrors? Eh, I don't care. Guys, guys, you got this. I'm busy. I'm busy. I am leveraging my PhD in PvE and I'm doing work. So yeah, he takes that one out, but he will have to retreat to help his boys out because with the help of Sylvanas, that Garden Terror is doing some solid damage at the bottom of the map. So Dino is now in play, but Hanzo is already dead and uh, that's a keep, hello? That is a game? Are they getting kills here? Um, what? Dino, Bainu, he's gone. Dino is dead and so might be the core? What just happened? This went from it's dead even, they just got Garden Terrors, to the game is over and Team Cure just wins the series. Alright, fair enough. Awesome call, awesome play, good moves and that is game two. Team Cure takes it with a 2-1 GG.